Good day everyone, I am Chris Daniel and for today I will be discussing about the noteworthy linguist and their impactful contributions in the world of linguists. First, we are going to talk about Aristotle. Aristotle was born in Stagira in ancient Macedonia in 384 BCE. His father was a personal physician and a close friend of the king of Macedonia. I mean, thus design an exceptionally gifted boy to begin with Aristotle joined Plato's Academy in Athens at the age of 17, to remain this until Dictus death in 347. These are the contributions of our history. Aristotle's role in the development of linguistics is a large part due to its theory of truth. For falsity and truth are not property or actual things in the world but properties of thought, meaning a sentence or thought contains either truth or false. Aristotle's importance in the professional study of language consists, first, of all in the fact that he dematologized language and made it an object of rational investigation. He didn't see language in a mythological way, but rather a way of expressing and communicating thoughts. He provided a first semantics analysis of prepositions, the predicate which expresses a property and the remainder of the preposition, referring to substance to which the property is assigned. He introduced the term case for paradigmatic morphological evaluation. He identified the basic components of sentences, the name and verb or subject and predicate. He analyzes the world as consisting of things that are named by any of the 10 categories, substance, quantity, quality, relation, place, time, state, position, action, or affection. Next is we will talking about Robert Louis Loth. Who is Robert Louis Loth? He is an English clergyman and grammarian, born in Manchester and took his education at Winchester School and New College of Sport. His short introduction of English grammar in 1762 became a standard textbook and his name has become synonymous with prescriptive grammar. Lutz's grammar is the source of many of the prescriptive shiblets that are studied in schools and establish him as the first of a long line of usage commentators who judge English language in addition to describing it while Luth advised against the ending sentences with preposition. He acknowledged the contribution as an idiom with which our language is strongly inclined to. Luth also distinguished between shall and will as a future auxiliary. So his contributions are, he wrote a prescriptive grammar using Latin terminology and parts of speech. He also defended the regularity and simplicity of the language against a tradition which viewed it as too primitive to possess any grammar at all. And lastly, he published a book entitled Short Introduction to English Grammar in 1762 and it became a standard textbook. Who is Ferdinand de Saussure? He was a linguist, simulation, and philosopher from Switzerland. He was born in Geneva, Switzerland in 1857. Ferdinand de Saussure was interested in languages early in his life by age 15. He had learned Greek, French, German, English, and Latin at that age. He also wrote an essay on languages. The contributions of Saussure in many key break thoughts in linguistics and semiotics in the 20th century based on histories. He is widely regarded as one of the pioneers of 20th century linguistics, as well as one of the two key inventors of semiotics or symbiology as social terms it. Saussure was one of the founders of structuralism at a very young age. He applied principles of structural analysis to solve a problem concerning the reconstruction of the Hindu-European language family. 
Ferdinand de Saussure is called the father of modern linguists. It was he who first of all emphasized the importance of living language as a living phenomenon. Saussure defines language as a borderland between thought and sound, where thought and sound combine to provide communication. Spoken languages includes the communication of concepts by means of sound images from the speaker to listeners. Structuralism by Saussure does by analyzing language synchronically social brains, a linguistic structure finds the system mechanism or a structure in which a language works, hence his approach to linguistic for which he had laid the groundwork come to be known as structuralism. Saussure discussed structuralism as literary theory based primarily on the linguistic tourist of Virginia, the social structuralism, considered language as a system of signs and significations the elements of which are understandable only in relation to each other and to the system. Ferdinand de Saussure invented the speech circuit. Perhaps the most famous of Saussure's idea is the distinction between language and speech, with speech referring to the individual occurrences of language usage. This constitutes two parts of three of Saussure's speech circuit. And that would be all about Ferdinand de Saussure. And next, let's proceed to Avram Noam Chomsky. Avram Noam Chomsky was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on December 7, in 1928. Both his parents was prominent he abuse scholars. He entered the University of Pennsylvania in 1945, where he achieved a bachelor's degree in linguistics in 1949 a master's degree in 1951 and later earned his doctorate in 1955. Wam Chomsky became a member of the faculty of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and performed his services at MIT as a visiting professor, influenced by the ideas of his mentor, the League Horse. Chomsky published his famous Greek synthetic structures in 1957. During that era, concepts regarding the origin of language were inspired by the behaviorist ideas, for instance, those of an old psychologist, Boris Frederick Schemer, who advocated that newborn babies had a black mind or known as fabula rust, and the children acquired language by means of learning and mimicry. Chomsky rejected that belief and argued that human beings were in fact born with the innate ability to realize the generative grammars that constitute every human language. Children make use of this innate ability to learn this language that they are exposed to. Chomsky establishing linguistic theory in 1965 with aspects of the theory of syntax in 1975 with theological structure of linguistic theory. Later works in cognitive sciences supported his claims. The influence of Chomsky on linguistic is similar to that of Charles Darwin on evolution and biology. These ideas have significant logical implications for various subjects of psychology and also extend to cognitive science, anthropology, sociology, and neurology. So that's all about Chomsky. Helen Keller once said, when we learn a new word, it is the key to untold treasures. Indeed, this linguist played a big role in preserving linguistics and its improvement. You might not be able to explain everything about them and until the tiniest detail of their contributions, but I hope that I were able to give justice to their works by collaborating them based on my understanding and research. Thank you and I hope you learned something from my video.